Hi everyone. Today I'm sharing a simple recipe for a 100% coconut oil soap that can be used for bathing. Coconut oil soaps are great for cleaning, but they can be drying to the skin. So this recipe uses a high 25% super fat to make the soap more gentle and suitable for bathing. This is a very simple recipe with only three ingredients and I'll be making it without a stick blender because I know not everybody has access to it to a blender, but if you want to use one, you can. All of the recipe details are in the description box below the video, including a half size version of the recipe and a low super fat version too, in case you want to make a coconut oil soap for cleaning. So the first thing I do to make this soap is get my coconut oil ready and I weigh that out on my digital scale. So you need 840 grams of coconut oil for this recipe. It makes a fairly large batch, about 1200 grams of soap altogether. So 12 bars of 100 grams soap. Um, but it, again, if you want to make a smaller batch, there is a half size uh, recipe version in the description box. So I just measure that out. You can see that my coconut oil is fairly solid because we're just coming out of winter into spring now. So it's still a little bit cool, but in some countries, your coconut oil might always be liquid and that's okay. It doesn't matter if it's liquid or solid because we're going to melt this anyway. Just make sure that you're using regular coconut oil that is solid in cool weather. So you want the type that melts at about 24 degrees Celsius or 76 degrees Fahrenheit, not the one that's always liquid, just regular coconut oil. This is refined coconut oil. Uh, you can use virgin, you know, more higher kind of quality coconut oils if you want. As long as it's 100% coconut oil, it will work. These are the molds I'm using. The, so I'm using these um, two lots of six capacity molds. They hold about 100 grams of soap batter each. So I'm going to get 12 bars out of this batch. I just get them ready. You can use a loaf mold as well if you want to. You can use any mold you like. Next, I get my water ready to make my lye solution. So I'm using 234 grams of water in this recipe, which is a moderate water amount. That's a two to one water to lye ratio. Um, I'll give more info about that in the description box if you're not sure what that means. So get your water ready. And now is the time to get your safety gear on before you handle any lye. You need to have gloves, goggles, glasses, and a face mask. Make sure you very, very careful. We're using 115 grams of sodium hydroxide, which gives this soap a 25% super fat level. Essentially, it's a lye discount, which creates some excess unsaponified oil in the soap, which makes it a little bit more gentle. Um, so just be careful with that sodium hydroxide and uh, weigh that out as accurately as you can. Next, I mix the lye solution. Now make sure you're doing this in a well ventilated area because there will be some fumes that come off this and um, it will get very hot as well. So stir it very, very carefully. Just add a little bit and then um, add the rest just sort of slowly. I tend to add it half and half. Um, it's not going to do anything too drastic, but you always must add the sodium hydroxide to the water and never the other way around. So just mix that really gently, staying out of the way um, of any fumes and tr treat those utensils very carefully. Make sure you rinse them straight away. Now it's time to prepare the coconut oil. So the coconut oil does need to be melted for this recipe. I melt it in my microwave, obviously it depends on the season. In the height of our summers, my coconut oil is already pretty much liquid, so I don't need to melt it too much, but it was a bit firm today. So I did, ended up doing two lots of 30 seconds. So this is after the first 30 seconds in the microwave and you can see it's a bit sort of slushy. It's definitely getting melted, but it needs to be fully melted. So I did another 30 seconds. And there it is. So a little bit of um, solid mass in there is okay. Once you stir that through, the rest will be warm enough to melt that. 
So with this recipe, normally I would use a stick blender to blend this soap and coconut oil soap saponifies very, very quickly. So it can set up super fast, but I'm using a whisk to make this soap today, which is a first for me. Well, not a first for me, but a first for a video. So I really wanted to show you how easy it is to do. It doesn't take that long. So I'm actually using this lye solution while it's still fairly hot and the oils are, they're not really hot, but they're warm. It's probably about 30 degrees or so. So you're just pouring that, that warm to, to hot lye solution straight into those warm oils. Don't worry too much about the temperature. As long as your oil is just melted and your lye solution is a bit warm, that's okay. Uh, the warmer it is and the more you agitate soap, the faster it saponifies. But remember that coconut oil soap saponifies very, very fast. If I was doing this with a stick blender, it would set up quite quickly. I'd probably have it in the mold already. Um, but using a whisk, that's obviously a lot slower, a lot less vigorous form of agitation. So it's going to take longer, but the heat helps. So the heat speeds up the the tracing of the soap and speeds up saponification. So I'm kind of balancing out the fact that I'm not using a stick blender, but I've got things fairly warm. So that, that makes it a little bit faster for when you're whisking. So this black whisk is like a cheap one that I found in an op shop for 50 cents or something. And I just keep it for my soap making and it's, it's great, does the job. I got this um, stainless steel spoon out just to, as a way of testing whether or not this soap is ready or not. Um, obviously, we've got to mix this a bit. This took 10 minutes all up to bring this soap to a really good emulsification and almost a, like a light trace that was made it ready to pour. So it does take a bit of whisking, but you can see the things to look out for are really the color change. So you'll see that as I mix this soap, it goes from that clear oily color to a more pale creamy color. So once it's getting lighter and more creamy, you know that it's emulsifying more and more. And what we're looking is for a really stable emulsion. And when you've got a stable emulsion, when I dribble the soap batter on the back of the spoon, you will see it's smooth. The oil doesn't separate from the lye. It's a nice cohesive, very thin, but cohesive batter. See that? There's no separation in that. Theoretically, that would be fine right now. I'd decide to mix this a little bit longer, but that is, a, that is an emulsified soap batter. So if I pour that into a mold at that stage, it would set up just fine. Anyway, I whisk it a little bit more. It's quite nice. It's only 10 minutes. <laughs> it's quite good to do. I'm going to show some other really cool little methods for making soap without a stick blender as well. Um, I've been investigating this a bit lately and it's quite an interesting topic. Um, there's lots of creative ways that you can make soap without appliances. Anyway, that's for another day. You can see this batter is getting paler. It's getting more creamy looking and it is coating the back of that spoon better and better the longer it goes. A little bit more. Doesn't really matter what technique you use, you're just really needing to agitate the batter. Agitation and heat are what make soap um, saponify. So when, we don't have a huge amount of heat in this, but we've got enough to speed it up a little bit. But the combination of the heat and the agitation, that's what's going to do it. It's looking pretty good. Yep, I'm ready to pour now. See how it's nice and light and creamy. It's at a very light trace. So it's definitely ready to go, even though it would be thinner than a lot of people would be happy with. This is a very stable emulsion and it sets up just fine. So now it's time to pour. Just get your mold, whatever mold you're using. I'm using these really pretty um, flower silicon molds. I just love them and they make a really nice, good size bar that fits in the hand quite nicely. Just beautiful. This is always my favorite part. 
So I got 11 and a half bars out of this. <laughs> My recipe wasn't quite big enough to fit them all in evenly. I could have made some a little bit less full to get that last one a bit fuller, but that's okay. I just put these chopsticks on top of these molds because I want to cover them to wrap the soap up a little bit just to force it to saponify a bit faster and maybe go through a bit of a gel phase. So I didn't want my top covers to touch the soap. So I put the chopsticks to create a little bit of a barrier. And then I just wrap it all up in a towel, just leave it on the bench and leave it for a few hours. If you're using a log mold or a large, you know, all in one sort of mold for your coconut or soap, don't wrap it up because it does saponify quite quickly. Um, it can overheat especially if you're using a no or a low super fat version. So um, I only wrap it up if you're using little individual bars like this. So this is much later in the afternoon, probably about three hours later, and the soap has firmed up. It's beautiful white creamy color. Um, I'm just sort of having a look at it really and inspecting it to see whether or not I'm going to unmold it. Now it's um, set up enough for me to be able to move it without anything spilling. So I decided to take this one out and straight away I could see that it was still a little bit sticky. So I decided to leave them in there until the next day. Um, and they come out a lot better when they've been left for a little while. Here we are the next morning. So the soap is quite hard now. It's definitely good enough to take out of the molds and it's just beautiful. I love it. What a simple soap. You can see that I didn't use any color or any scent. If you wanted to, you could add some clay or some whatever soap colors you want to. You could also add some essential oils or some fragrance oil. Just be aware that fragrance oils and some essential oils can accelerate trace as well. So they can make the saponification speed up. Um, that can be good in this case, sometimes not so good, but I, I just wanted to leave this one really plain. I have a thing for really plain soaps. I don't know what it is. I made a lot of really colorful soaps early on when I started soap making, but these days I just really enjoy the plain ones. They're just beautiful as they are. Just a little bit of soap rearranging there. <laughs> they look really nice. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. It's been quite fun to make. I'm really enjoying getting more soap recipes out there. Oh yeah, I should show you this. I decided to test the pH of this. I was really curious to see how much it saponified. So I just got out my pH little test strips and got one of the bars. So this is just the next day. And look at this, it's already green. So it's about nine on the pH scale. It's it's pretty close to fully saponified. So technically that soap is almost ready to use, but it will benefit from a, a good standard sort of six week cure. And here's the soap after it's been curing for about a week. So it's fully saponified now and technically it's safe to use, but the soap will just get better with time. It will really be a lot better after that six week cure. I just wanted to show you how bubbly and um, fluffy the lather is. Coconut oil is very high in lauric acid, so it, it is quite well known to have a really good lather in the soap, but again, it does have that drying effect. So this high super fat version is a, is a nice way to compromise. You get the benefits of the good lather of a coconut oil soap, but it's not quite so drying. It's got that nice extra fatty acids in the soap that haven't been saponified because of that super fat. Well, there you go. That's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please ask questions if you need to in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the video description box. I'm gonna put heaps of important information there, especially if you've never made soap before. Please check that out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.